Okay, we're here with Kevin Campbell, and Kevin was born here and raised here in Bondurant. I'm Gloria Thomas, and I and Martha Saunders are doing the interview for the Bondurant Community Club Pops. And Kevin is, we're hoping will tell, give us some information about his early life in Bondurant and some history that we don't know about. So we'll just start. Kevin, would you give us your full name, please? I already did, but the camera was off. <laughs> We can't be giggling on this, Campbell. Campbell, give us your full name, please. Kevin Walden Campbell. And Kevin, what year were you born here? 1954, the year after you were born. And Kevin, where is your family's homestead located? It's uh, literally, it's uh, located on Jack Creek because that's where the water that. Uh, um, uh, comes out of that we irrigate it with, but it's a ways from Jack Creek. It's between, it's actually between Jack Creek and Dale Creek. Okay. And you're a third generation Campbell, correct? I am. And your parents' names were? Walden Lorenzo Campbell and Patricia Joyce McGinnis Campbell. And they came from where? My dad was uh, <coughs> uh, raised here. Okay, and your mom was from? Yeah, she came from Utah. Okay, and then so your father <coughs> was raised in Bondrad, and his parents' names would be? Uh, Lorenzo Edgar Campbell, but they called him Lenny. Nobody called him Lorenzo. And uh, Loretta Lance Campbell. And uh, her, they called her Rita. And where'd she come from? Uh, I'm not sure where the, I mean, uh, where she was born. Uh, uh, she maybe maybe Utah. I don't know. My granddad was born. Uh, I think I'm not sure where he was born. Okay. But they <coughs> they came here out of Utah and Idaho. And what? When was that? Uh, my granddad came here first in 1910, but he didn't uh, move, come here to Homestead until 1913. And he, he, you had mentioned earlier, he came with? His, his brother and his brother-in-law, Arthur Campbell and Shell Baker. Okay. And those gentlemen settled up near? They, 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 they all homesteaded consecutive homesteads uh, on that flat there. Between Jack Creek and Del Creek? Right. Okay. All right. <laughs> Also tell them about owning the land. Oh, it, that 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 homestead is the only piece of ground in the whole back basin that's never been sold. It's still, it's still Campbell. Campbell it's ground. never been sold. It's changed hands from generation to generation, uh, but it's uh, the only piece that's never been sold. Maybe the maybe. only original homestead that's the, the only piece of ground that's never been sold. And how, how has it been added to, like the Bondurant place? Well, we've the, the, uh, uh, my granddad uh, bought the Bondurant place, uh, uh, I believe in the early 40s when my dad was in the, uh, was in the uh, service. Uh, I think he went in. Anyway, around 42 or something like that, I think my granddad uh, bought the Bondurant place from Carol Noble. Okay, is there any other land you've accumulated over the years? Right, uh, there is. My, my, uh, uh, my mother and father, uh, they bought uh, uh, what my dad always referred to as the Bowlesby place uh, from Anson Hoyt. And they did that, I believe, in... Uh, 52, uh, they didn't have it when they were ma first married. Uh, the first uh, uh, the first house they had uh, when they were uh, married was up on uh, the Baker place there that uh, Franks owned at that time. And they, had, they lived in a house up there. And I think the next year, my mother would know this but way better than me. Uh, uh, if you could get her to give do an interview, but really? she probably won't do 
maybe you could help us with that. Um, <laughs> where okay. was where is the Hoyt place originally? The the one that we bought bought from Anson Hoyt. Hoyt, mm -hmm. It's where my mother lives now. Oh, okay. And but was originally it was Bill Bowlesby's homestead. Oh, okay. That's why my dad called it the Bowlesby place. Okay. It was originally Bill Bowlesby's homestead. Okay. And. Uh, and this would be turning up the Jack Creek Road off of the Highway 191, and that's what, about two miles off the highway, Kevin? Is it that far? It's uh, almost three. Almost three miles. There's a chimney that still stands that nobody seems to know where that chimney came from, who it belonged to, you know, right before your mom's place. Is that the Bowlesby place? No. Uh, well, that was originally Bandy Bowlesby's homestead. But uh, that isn't where the chimney come from. The chimney was it was Fisk's house. Uh, okay. uh, Roy Roy Fisk and Joanne Max parents' place. Okay. Okay. Let's see. That Winter, was, which, okay, that's that. That was, that, that, that chimney is just below our fence line. Okay, and be between Victor Max place. So that well, it's sense. on Victor okay. Max Place. Okay. All right. And uh, but but before it was Max, it was uh, before it was Victor and Joanne's. It was uh, uh, her parents' place. Uh, uh, doctor uh, Fisk. He was a doctor. I, I can't remember his name. They they called him Doctor oh. Fisk. And oh. <laughs> uh, and, uh, and and Marcella was the. Uh, was uh, the, the mother. Okay, all right, and then we have the Fist, Roy and Carolyn Fist that still are here, and Bruce and Brett, Brett. Brett that are still here. Those. Mm -hmm. And then the Max are down in Farson, is that correct? Well, uh, 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 oh, Victor oh, yeah. Sr. and uh, Joanne still live here in the summertime and own that, own that property below, uh, below us there. And uh, Originally, uh, that uh, Doctor Fisk and this Anson Hoyt were in were partners on uh, on both both places, and it was uh, uh, I believe they bought it from Marshall Purvis, and uh, he had operated a dude ranch there, and he was the one that named it the Sea Heart Sea. And uh, uh, and then I believe uh, I, I uh, uh, Victor and, and Joanne would know more about this than, than I, but uh, but uh, I believe Fisk's and uh, uh, Anson Hoyt were partners and uh, partnered up and bought the the Sea Heart Sea from uh, uh, which was both places. Minus m minus a hundred acres that Victor bought from Bandy Bowlesby later, that's that he that he owns there now. Uh, that uh, it didn't consist of all of what we and, and Victor own now, because uh, the Sea Heart Sea, because <coughs> Victor acquired another hundred acres from Bandy Bowlesby uh, at a later date. Uh, I mean, Bandy was down there when I was a kid below uh, us, but. Uh, but no, Max still on their portion of the, what was the Sea Heart Sea now, and uh, <clears throat> and uh, but they dissolved uh, Fisk's and Anson Hoyt dissolved partnership, and they split the place in half, the Sea Heart Sea in half, and my dad and mother bought uh, uh, the upper uh, part of it from Where you Anson. Have that now? Yeah, from Anson Hoyt, and that was. Uh, uh, 52, I believe, but maybe not. No, that might have been 53 because I think they got married in 52. I think okay, now when your when your grandparents came here and homesteaded, what was, did were they planning to be cattle ranchers at that point in time? Is that why they saw Bondran as home? Well, yeah. That's I mean, that's, what it's it. always been a cattle ranch, right, from the get go. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now, what about what did they they Season here is so short. What did they do for groceries? Did they have a garden? Well, they did have a garden, and of course, uh, uh, they ate a lot of wild game, and, and they 
did have some pigs, you know, and and uh, um, and milk cows. And, and uh, where did they go to buy flour and sugar and canned down here, tomatoes? Down here at Bondurant. It was open then. Okay, he was bringing, and he was the local supply store. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. And uh, I assume they'd get to town once in a while. Town know. being Jackson, Pinedale? Uh, Pinedale, I think, probably, you know. Uh, my granddad packed the mail uh, to, uh, uh, I don't know for how long, but he'd pack it from the Bondurant place to uh, uh, out here to what they call the Scott place out on top of the rim, and then he'd meet somebody there. What is the Scott place now? Well, the Miller, Miller, Miller's got it now, and not the not the, There's a Scott place uh, uh, on the Green River, but they called this. They later they called it the Culbertson place. It's the first place after you top out over okay. the rim, past past uh, the. Where you the, turn the, to go into Hobart like Ranches, that upper. Yeah, upper, okay. uh, Har Harmon Fister owns the first ground to your right, and then then uh, that. Uh, after that's Miller's. And, okay, so uh, so the mail from Bondurant would go to the top of the rim, and yeah. then they would relay it on into Pinedale from there, or wherever uh, it yes, was going. I guess that was a long time ago. Yeah. Right? but he'd, he'd, ski, he'd do it on he'd, he'd he'd do it on skis. Now, how they did it in the summertime, I don't know, but he he didn't pack it in the summertime. He packed it in the wintertime with on skis. Well, there would the road that the highway was obviously not a highway, but it was a dirt road at that point in time. But it still went the same route, right up over. The oh, road. Well, I yeah. suppose approximately. I couldn't yeah. tell you about yeah. that, you know. But uh, I think they've always went out over the rim. A lot of kind of, of that. kind of the kind way of. they do. I mean, yeah. in this yeah. kind of topped out in the same spot. Mm -hmm. But how? Yeah, the, like Martha said this. Uh, it's uh, on a different core. I mean, it's Moved in the same area, but it's way different, just like the road down through the canyons, way different. It used to be on the other side of the river, now it's... I think originally it was on this side the of the river, side. and then they changed uh -huh. it. And it is, is that right? Uh -huh. Part of it was, anyway. But, so uh, did your... Did your Dad have any siblings? Did he have brothers and sisters? Mm -hmm. He had uh, uh, he had uh, five sisters. Two of them didn't. Uh, uh, one of them died as an infant, and the other one died as I think when she was two years old. But he had two or three sisters that uh, grew up, and uh, uh, one of them lived here. All her his oldest sister, uh, Molly, was on. Uh, her name, real name wasn't Molly, was Mildred, that's what my dad called her, but most people called her Molly. You've heard of Aunt Molly, she was called Aunt Molly by a lot of people because she had, she had the nieces and nephews that all called her Aunt Molly, and then lots of people started calling her Aunt Molly, you know. But they, uh, her and her husband lived there at what's the Bizzoni, called the Bizzoni place now. She was married to Jim Bizzoni. And did they, they raise cattle as well? They did. So that was pretty much the standard. Everybody did. Homesteading yeah. business here was cattle ranching. Most everybody. Most everybody, I should say. Yeah. And uh, there wasn't much else, you know. <laughs> well, dude ranching didn't didn't the well, there was some dude, do some, some dude, dude some ranching some... as well. well? I don't I don't remember hearing about bond ranch doing it uh, uh, like. Uh, uh, Banny Bowles we did, and uh, uh, this Marshall Purvis did, and and uh, 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 Bob McNeil used to do some, take some hunters out, just to do hunters, you know, and a lot. There was a lot of the, a lot of people took hunters out, you know, a lot. Another of way to make a living. Yeah, right, right, and uh, uh, the Hickses. Uh, which would have been <clears throat> a long time ago. My dad worked, used to guide for them. They, uh, who had this ground over here, that Saunders has got part of uh, what uh, they called the Dave Hicks place, and uh, 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 or 
Bear's got all of the Dave Hicks place, I think, except for that. I'm not sure. No, this that piece of ground there that Evans is on now. I believe it was part of the Ralph I Hicks so. Ralph Hicks deal. So. Yeah. That, the corner yeah. of the upper hole back in the highway. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that was part of the Ralph Hicks deal. But uh, the the Ralph Hicks uh, family, they were. They took hunters out, and my dad guided for them when he was young, you know, and he just did. Albert Fates, that owned what the, was the black powder it was uh, at the one time. It was the C-Barbie. Barbie, Barbie. Barbie. Mm -hmm. And owned this place at one time, but he uh, uh, originally lived down there in that uh, <clears throat> house that uh, was uh, uh, that's still the black powder that's been way redone, you know, but uh, uh, they, they took hunters out, my dad's for, uh, uh, that's how, and did some, uh, uh, had cabins to rent and stuff, and that's how uh, my mother and my dad met, was, uh, she was uh, working uh, here, I don't know if she worked two summers or just, I believe she worked a couple of summers in, uh, down there for Fates's. And uh, <clears throat> my dad was guiding guided hunters or whatever for him, and and <clears throat> they met and sparked. <laughs> <laughs> met and, and so that's uh, so yeah. I, I, I shouldn't have said there wasn't much else, but there wasn't. You know, it wasn't uh, the base. The base income the, was, was well. Yeah, coverage. I mean, if you had, uh, you didn't. There wasn't a lot of people sold a lot of hay in those days, you know, if they did it would be to the neighbors because you didn't transport, you didn't haul it out, you know, and there wasn't, uh, there wasn't all the, the, the people, uh, the, the, the homes with people that has, ho has, has got horses around, like there was no, no development whatsoever hardly when I was a, when I was a boy, there wasn't even the, there wasn't even the buildings. The first development, I guess the first development probably would have been down along the highway, which I don't remember, like from from the old post office on down through there. Uh, I don't remember uh, the, the Triangle F, you know, and the, and the, and the few houses and the whole so back the, village. The Triangle you know. F was, was here when <coughs> you came along. It was already established, and the Elkhorn was already established. Yeah, and, okay. and that's so part of the black powder. You had the Elkhorn. You had the well, Triangle the L. The black powder wasn't a uh, wasn't. Um, it's a dude ranch, right? Yeah, and a cattle ranch, and and a cattle ranch. I mean, they they own uh, he he owned all of that ground uh, up from there uh, to as far as uh, uh, as to where Henrys live and and uh, uh, Richardsons and, and that. Or what used to be Richardson's, mm -hmm. and, and uh, uh, all of that meadow ground that uh, that uh, uh, for uh, like uh, uh, for Patty's place is, and and where Fisk's uh, ground it's is, mostly. and where Steve. That was all that B B. That yeah, that and it was all meadow ground. There wasn't any. That's all it was. I mean, uh, uh, Patty's house wasn't even. The faces were the ones that put the, the, uh, that house there. And it came from somewhere down on Alpine somewhere, I think she told me. I have no idea, yeah. but um, they, they moved it in. And was it Frank Van Vleck that had the BRB? I believe so, there? Martha, I believe. Were, there were two brothers, one start Roy, and one of them started a store in Jackson, and the other one took this ranch out here. Uh, and you would know that more well, than more just, than I, because the the first owners that I I mean I knew of I knew of uh, uh, the uh, the uh, the Van Vleck's owned it. That's where the V Bar V mm -hmm. came from was Van Vleck, but uh, but that was before my time. The first owners that I knew that had it were Fates's, mm -hmm. and, and that was Margaret and Albert. Right. Mm -hmm. Exactly. And uh, then uh, they uh, later sold it uh, to uh, Roy Fisk. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, there wasn't, these buildings weren't here. 
and but he still had what was referred to in those days or what he bought it from somebody by the name of Call, I believe, and so they called this. The, he had it leased, and then he bought it, and they called it the Call Place or whatever. Okay, they, that was Call, C U L L. Is it Call Place? Is that yeah, is that yeah. what it was? And he was a judge, but that's all I know. Yeah, and I never knew him, or and I knew he, he owned it, and Albert leased it, and then he bought it from him, and I don't know if he bought it from him at the time he sold the other, or if he got it bought before he sold the other, and then went ahead and sold the other, and, mm -hmm. and put the buildings here, and and uh, and uh, was here for. He wasn't. They didn't. It doesn't seem to me like they lived here for too long before I Gil bought it. I think probably about six years before Gil Ordway bought it. Yeah. Okay, Kevin. Let's let's talk about your your family. Uh, um, one, one, one point of interest about the the V Bar B down there. The, I, I, I'm 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 certain that's where uh, Perry Fister originally homesteaded. Mm -hmm. I think you're right, and that was. Harm's granddad, mm -hmm. Jake and Jean's dad, mm -hmm. and that's why uh, Fisters were here before Campbell's, but uh, uh, that isn't uh, uh, their the, the original homestead has changed hands. So it was Fister, then it was Van Fleck. I, I no, yeah, I, think Jake, same, I think Jake. Quir, right? I think Jake Quarry. Okay, think, uh, was uh, after, after that, I believe. But mm. uh, anyway. Uh, he was a uh, Jake Fister told me this story that his uh, his dad was a progressive kind of guy, and there wasn't any room to progress down there because there wasn't there wasn't enough ground adjoining him. So he traded for some ground up here. I don't know if it was the piece where uh, Harmon would know. I'm sure if it was the piece where uh, they live today, or if it was anyway he traded. Made some kind of an agreement and, and and got ground over here, and there was lots of adjoining homesteads there that he was able to acquire, and to to put together the nice piece of ground they got now, mm -hmm. and uh, so that's why we've got the only piece that's never been that's never changed hands, never been sold. Fisters were here first, but the original homestead they they don't uh, is now. Is Five times changed, 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 yeah. changed, changed hands many times. Many times. Yeah. Okay, sorry to interrupt. Oh, that's okay. That's okay. Um, just yeah, we you, you can fill in a lot of holes about the history of Bondrand, I'm sure. Uh, but you know, as far as the Campbell family, so your grandma and grandpa came here, and then your dad married your mom, and had yourself. And what siblings do you have? <laughs> Uh, this is, are you sure the camera's yeah. this time? <laughs> yes. Okay, I have uh, two sisters and a brother. Uh, Catherine uh, is my oldest sister. Do you, need, do you want the full name? Sure. <laughs> this is historical stuff. <laughs> okay. Uh, Catherine Ann Campbell Bond, Colleen Campbell, and uh, Lenny Joe Campbell. And they all reside in Bondurant now on the Campbell Place. Uh, Colleen doesn't reside on the Campbell Place. She resides on the Little Jenny. Okay, they're still they're still local Bondurant. Mm -hmm. Okay, and now are there are there more or there's a, there was another generation following yours? You have children. I have a daughter. And her name is Heidi Marie Campbell. And Heidi has a daughter. Mm -hmm. And her name is Davielle May Sterner. Okay, and does Catherine have any children? No. Colleen has a daughter. Mm -hmm. Colleen's daughter's name is Jenny. Jenny, Jenny, little uh, Jenny. <laughs> no. Just Jenny. Well, I, I I have a little trouble keeping track of okay. that stuff. I don't That's remember. Her Colleen name. and Bud Smith have a daughter named Jenny. Right. Okay, and then Lenny has. And Bud and Colleen were married, but she kept her. She kept her main name. Okay. And, and, uh, and they had, they had little uh, Jenny. Little, yeah, little <laughs> Jenny. Yeah. Uh, and then Lenny has two kids. Uh, he does have. And their names are. Walden and Anna. <laughs> okay, and so that's that's the. 
fourth generation. Mm -hmm. And then we have a fifth with Heidi's. Mm -hmm. All right. Now, you attended school here in Bondurant, um, and I believe you told me at some point in time that it was a summer school because of the winter conditions. Correct. And you went to school from what, what months of the year did April you go to school? April through the first week in December. Okay. First part of first part of April, about the first week in April till the first week in Did December. Did that vary with the snow melting and coming? No. No, the county would always um, uh, get us usually get us plowed out by uh, the first of April. They'd come in with a cat. And okay, out. so way you... way different uh, deal than it is now. They uh, Charlie McAllister come in with the cat, <laughs> they drink, and play cards. He'd just move in here. He'd move, the in here, move, move, move in here and stay here. Uh, his uh, mother-in-law was uh, Lydia Neely down here that, that was the postmaster at the time and had the, uh, had a house and, and, the, and the, the, the post office down here at, uh, uh, across from uh, uh, the, the uh, where Ammons were, and, uh, down there, right next to the church, and uh, and uh, uh, the, anyway, that was his uh, uh, mother-in-law. He'd stay there sometimes, and or he'd uh, stay with the wherever he wound up that night with the cat when he was plowing the loop road. Why uh, they'd play solo and drink whiskey, and he'd get on the cat the next morning. I'd still be a little drunk. You know? <laughs> didn't, 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 didn't have to do any. Too dark to plow or too drunk to plow. Didn't have to do any tests. Uh, <laughs> they, they didn't test the employees like like they do now. now didn't did have you? to worry about anybody coming in and testing him, you know. And, and uh, he'd plow till he. Till he wanted to stop and drink. Till, 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 yeah, till he, got, till, he wanted, till he got to the next place or whatever, you know, and it'd take him probably a week to get it, get it plowed out, and then we'd start school, you know. Hmm. Yeah. And now, did he plow the upper hole back as well? Was there families up there that had kids coming to school? Yeah, I'm sure he did. I'm sure he probably did. Uh, just, uh, you know, we were a lot more... Uh, 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 what's the word? A um, uh, more, lot more isolated in those days. The two different, the north end and the south end of Bondurant, were not as uh, of the basin. Were not uh, didn't communicate near like we do now. You know, I mean. And uh, the distance is really not that big. I mean, you're talking what less than yeah, but people less just, than ten miles from where right. But people, you know, you. but the the, the upper the upper Hoback was quite a bit removed from from uh, our area over here so I'm not real sure uh, you know the Jack Creek Dale Creek deal was uh, I'm not real sure uh, what happened up there Bob McNeil might have kept part of it plowed out himself with his cat you know because he used to uh, did he have kids that came to school yeah did they come down to go to the school on the highway? The, yeah, they 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 went uh, they went to Bondurant. So the road too. had to be open. I mean, I went to school with the youngest daughter, Mary Kay, uh, but she was older than me. I think I went to school with her two years, and then she like when I was in the first and second grade, and she was in the seventh and eighth. I think. So the school was through the eighth grade here. Mm -hmm. yeah. Can you remember some of the kids that went to school there? Probably all of them. Oh, uh, the uh, Richard Pearson. Uh, he went to school, I think, and he would know. Mary Kay, I think, I might have went to school with her three years. Uh, she might have been a year uh, younger than uh, than uh, uh, Richard. It seemed like uh, uh, when the first year I, when I was in first grade, there was one eighth grader, and that was Sharon Dawkins. And uh, she... Uh, uh, I, I just went to school with her one year. Richard, uh, I went to school with uh, two years. I believe Richard and Harmon 
were in the same grade. Harmon Fister, mm -hmm. I believe they were in the same grade. I'm not sure. And uh, then, uh, then Fisters uh, had a uh, a family working for him over here on that uh, stayed over there in the, uh, where they, their trailer the trailer is there now. There was a house there, and uh, they were a big family. Uh, Snow's Carl Snow was the guy's name, and and he had uh, they had seven kids. And those kids, uh, Darlene got, Pinton. Yeah. Was one of them. Okay. She no, married. she wasn't one of the, those no. snow kids. Okay. No. But she, she, she some of that, se there. some of that same family, but that was, uh, of uh, some of that same family. But I, it was uh, uh, George and Hannah Snow, I believe, that 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 helped raise Darlene. Okay. She, she remembers. She had mentioned she had come to school here as a young young girl. And yeah, she was. She, she, Darlene isn't actually a Snow, but they helped. Uh, her name, her maiden name, wasn't Snow, uh, but uh, I'm pretty sure. I don't think. I it think was. Hannah is Darlene's sister or half sister. Something like that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. That I think that that, that I think you. And, and Hannah was older, but I think, so I think they, she came to stay with them. I think you're right, yeah. And, uh, but this would have been the red schoolhouse that's down behind the Bondurant School now. Well, uh, yeah, right. I mean, uh, that's where I went. That's, that's I, and, and and I, Pearson and Harmon. Yeah, we all went there, and, and it had been going for a little while when I went. I don't know when, uh, I mean, and it was like, Pretty good building, though. And mm -hmm. then you know, I mean, it, it was uh, like uh, it's old and yeah, wore out now. But uh, <laughs> well, yeah, yeah, so am I. <laughs> did Terry Ammon go to school here? I don't think so. Okay. Uh, and of course, he was older than me. But I think, uh, see, they came from California, mm -hmm. and uh, I don't think he ever did go to school here. Okay. I may be wrong. But I don't think so. I think that uh, uh, he went to school in California. Okay. It, f f certainly, his early years he did. Mm -hmm. You know, and I'm I'm pretty sure. I don't think he ever went to Jackson or Pinedale as for high school education. You know, I think he uh, mm -hmm. uh, he did go to the. He might have went to Jackson. I don't know. He did go to the University of Wyoming. I, I know that. Mm -hmm. So. Uh, so he might have went to Jackson, and he—I don't think he went to Bondurant, but that was—he was—he's quite a little older than me, you know. So uh, 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 he was the one that drove the school bus when uh, Fred and Lori and, yes, and uh, Catherine and I went to the Pinedale the first time. Which and that I was already, after the eighth grade. I already told you. That. <laughs> Excuse Kevin. <laughs> Excuse Gloria. <laughs> so, you, so your your first grade through eighth grade was in Bondurant, and then you had to go to Pinedale right. on the bus. Or you boarded. How many years did you board before the bus started? The last you already told me that, but tell us again. Well, I I boarded the first three years. I went to to uh, uh, school, uh, high school. The first two years, I stayed with Chauncey and Mary Clark. Uh, that had that uh, place right outside of Pinedale by where Dew Lumber is, or Pinedale, what they call Pinedale Lumber now, it was, but it, it was Dew Lumber then. And uh, then the last year I stayed with Charlie and Sweet McAllister, and then that I, that I boarded out, and then the next year, as, I, year. Uh, as, 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 as a senior, Sa uh, Saunders uh, moved here. And that, and my mother wanted to get a bus going back and forth, and uh, so uh, Fred and Lori started at uh, uh, mid semester, uh, the second semester, I believe, mm -hmm. isn't that right? They started mm -hmm. uh, in January or whenever second semester is, yeah. and uh, uh, Catherine and I drove. Uh, uh, I well, I drove Catherine along. <laughs> 
I wouldn't ride with her today, much less then. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, anyway, we drove to the junction the first part of the year because we've been kind of, we, they told us that once Fred What, what do you refer to as the junction? The junction? The, the what, well. Daniel what, Junction? The Daniel okay. Junction. Used to be Sergeant's. Sergeant's Inn, Inn yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But yeah, the Daniel Junction. Or, so the, you would the, drive the, the, In those days it was referred to as the Y. There, and this is definitely a T, it's not a Y. Well, there was a Y, though. <laughs> oh, must have. Yeah, it split. It's changed. It's, it's, uh, the, it split from Daniel, uh, the road from Daniel split, and one uh, fork of it would come uh, north, and the other fork would go south, and they called it the Daniel Y. Hmm. And then you and would So they didn't actually call it the no junction. One. They did. They didn't call it, because the, the, as Martha said, the, the place of business was called Sergeant's Inn. Was and there a hotel there? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh. Big, uh, what was it, about three stories, Martha? It was, it was a big. Yeah, big, uh, big uh, lodge. Lodge, and they had, uh, I can't remember, to, what, what kind of, uh, uh, what did they sell in there? In, 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 they had a, a kind of a convenience store, you know, and they, I, I don't remember. I know they, they had a restaurant and rooms, and I'm not sure what else they had there. Yeah, and I, I don't remember either. Because Daniel used to have a store. Right, right, and so I don't know. I they don't probably they didn't did. have a store, maybe. They I probably just, just had a remember. restaurant and rooms, and then, no, they didn't have a bar, but they had the bar at Daniel there. Mm -hmm. and. Uh, uh, Sid Skyver uh, uh, was uh, uh, had a room up there, and uh, he was a old cowboy that cowboyed for Millers and uh, different people, but mostly Millers for many years. And he drank a little bit of whiskey too, <laughs> as any good cowboy would, right? <laughs> yeah, as typical. And uh, he uh, uh, was uh, on. Uh, Drunk and, and uh, he went to sleep up there in one of those rooms with a cigarette, and, and uh, it burned up, and so did he. There with the sergeants in and the cowboys. Hmm. Yeah. Probably a song in there somewhere. <laughs> Don't smoke when you're sleeping. <laughs> <laughs> All right, back to Bondurant. The Bondurant barbecue has been going on, as I understand, since like 1941. So it would have been well established by 1954. Uh, what are your first early memories of the Bondurant barbecue? People, I hear there used to be really large, large crowds that would come in for this. Well, um, yeah, and, and uh, you know, uh, Martha would probably well, tell us what you know of the Bondurant that, barbecue more about history. That than me, but it was. Uh, because, I mean, I was still pretty young when, I was still in school when Martha came here, you know, so, and, and she's been much more affiliated with it than, than my family has been, although I did donate you beef one time. You I, did I remember donate me beef one time, I've got to choke you. <laughs> <laughs> Your mom and dad used to be very active. Right, yeah. And I think and, Pat was um, secretary for several years. Your Aunt she? Molly. Until she couldn't anymore, so more tickets than anybody to the bar. I remember that now that you mentioned it. They she, were very active. You know. Yeah, 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 and and uh, so. <laughs> this is your. This is your. Did did, did 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 you get scolded? <laughs> yeah. I I I I'd appreciate it if you'd help me out because, like I said, I you can remember you know when I was eighteen years old. Or whatever. That was a I, long time that, ago. That was probably the last thing on my mind was a barbecue. <laughs> <laughs> it probably had to be girls there. I, I, had to be girls, was, pretty girls. I was much more interested in, in trying to date the Saunders girls than it was the barbecue. <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> so, uh, but it, it it was quite a big county event at one time. Is your camera off again? No, it's on. I'm just trying to figure out how to get a picture of Martha on here so we I know who's talking to you. Oh. <laughs> and, uh, uh, it, it, I mean, uh, I've seen it, uh, uh, 
uh, go downhill as a county event, not but not because of the barbecue itself, but but just because the the whole country's changed. You know, people uh, uh, the the uh, the the local county people uh, don't. Uh, uh, get together, you know, like the, the ranchers and, and, uh, and the businessmen and stuff in Sublet County. There, uh, at, at that point in time, there wasn't a lot of uh, uh, re uh, residential people. Well, Hoback ranches didn't exist at that time. They that started in the mid-70s, late 70s? Uh, late 70s, probably. probably uh, they were still running cattle on it from when I was... Uh, was growing up, you know, in my early years, why uh, uh, Miller's owned it and ran cattle on it, and uh, so uh, uh, there was very there. There just was most of the people were either ranchers or businessmen or whatever, you know, and they and they and everybody knew each other, and the barbecue was one of the places. I mean, uh, that they, you know, all of them, lots of the, I, I shouldn't say all, but many of the old timers would would come in and visit, and and uh, didn't seem like there was a lot of drinking. Quite a social event. It's quite a social event. They'd get together and maybe drink a little beer and eat and visit, and they didn't. As far as the event itself goes, it probably there probably uh, is a lot more going on now than there used to be at that time, you know. And uh, well, there wasn't uh, quite they, the they would just eat, they would just eat and and visit. They didn't. Need music, or they didn't need. Uh, there wasn't, you know. The kids just go, you know, just eat and visit, right? Mm -hmm. And uh, maybe drink a little beer, you know. But it didn't seem like it was an event where uh, very few people really overdrank. But they drink a little beer and visit and have fun, and and uh, uh, so that's that's the change I can see. Is it's not near as uh, near as local as it used to be. I, I know there was huge crowds, but a lot of them were local people, you know, uh, and the local mm -hmm. ranchers and businessmen from Pinedale and Big Piney and such, Daniel and that country doesn't show up like they used to. Because well, there's a lot just more going, going on. People, there's, there's more going on and people's, you know, uh, people, uh, that was a big day for them to come in, you know, and and visit. They'd all get to, they could all get together and in one spot instead of seeing each other every now and then at all the different weddings and all the different social occasions that go on, you know. And people people just didn't commute in those days like they do now. Mm, it's a lot like, easier and to get like in, like in my well, like when I was growing up, it was a big deal to go to town. Yeah, to well, you know, I guess uh, you know having being be, being a more, newcomer to the area. I uh, remember probably you and Lenny talking about how you know you could go down to Florky's, which is now the Elkhorn, and buy your fence wire and your school clothes and mm -hmm. your boots. They had a hardware store, yeah. yeah. And so, you know, you didn't you need to go... You couldn't get everything you could in town, but you could get horseshoes and stuff. Yeah, they had a, kind of a hardware store. and So people kind of did business where they lived, and then to go to to get to go to a, a barbecue in Daniel or Bondurant or Big Piney would be a social event. Yeah, now, the, 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 the different the, 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 the different communities didn't commingle near as much as uh, uh, we do now. You know, I mean, the, I mean, uh, but everybody they knew each other and liked each other, but they didn't since since I mean traveling. It, it was you know nobody would like in those days would like drive to Jackson to work every day or to Pinedale to work every day like oh. my whole family does now. My, uh, uh, my mother drives to Jackson, uh, my uh, two sisters drive to Jackson, uh, my ex-wife drives to Jackson, and uh, my girlfriend drives to Pinedale, you know? So, I mean, uh, uh, that, that was unheard of. I mean, nobody did that. Yeah. Well, the world Nobody has changed did. tremendously in the last right. and, and so 40 years. it isn't such a big deal. Just, I mean, we all uh, love to see each other, and I love my friends, and and uh, love and have fun whenever I go someplace, and 
drink too much whiskey and have fun and visit, you know. But she, uh, I mean, uh, like uh, you know, the other uh, night, I went to Pinedale to watch a horse buck that I got, and, and uh, they they tried him out, and and hell, I saw a whole bunch of people just right there in that night. In that night, you know, I mean, they're there at the rodeo, you know, and. Uh, uh, so anyway, as far as the barbecue goes, uh, I think it's uh, still a very uh, good event that Bond Ranch should be proud of. But it doesn't get the local Sublet County support that it used to get because people just, and it's not because they don't uh, like the barbecue, it's just, it's not, it's not such a big, there's, there's so much there, yeah, and, and every, the, li life has kind of changed, it seems like, all the way around, you know. We're all uh, way too busy. Everybody's way too busy, and, and, and uh, they don't t people don't take the time to uh, go visit each other and see each other like they used to, you know, I mean. Uh, well, we had, to, we had to put you on the movies to get you up here. <laughs> <laughs> well, I come here occasionally. <laughs> Uh, what but, can you tell us about the Indian Trail? You know, uh, I can't. I don't know how it got its name, how, why they call it the Indian Trail. And uh, Joy said to me, she said, you mean you were raised here and you never asked why it was called the Indian Trail? And I <laughs> said, well, I just assumed the Indians used it, I don't know. Makes sense to me. <laughs> I mean, look where it's at. It takes you right up into Del Creek, and that's yeah. where the hunting and, was, right? Uh, it's been the Indian Trail as long as I remember. Have you found anything? No, around here we find fire rings and, and etc. Do you ever find anything up your way? No. Uh, my dad found an arrowhead, a small arrowhead that he gave me uh, right there. Uh, at uh, my grandfather's homestead where I live now. He mm -hmm. found a, uh, but he found it when I was, he didn't find it when he was a boy. He found it uh, when, uh, when I was a boy, he found it and brought it home to me and gave it to me, a small, small arrowhead, mm -hmm. I think for, I mean, it wasn't big like, but it was perfect, it was perfect. And I, I suppose in all the shuffles I've been through in my life, I've probably lost it, but, uh, because I, I, but I had it when I was a boy, and and uh, living in the different spots I have, and, mm -hmm. <laughs> and uh, uh, with all that's happened to me in my life, I probably lost it. But that's the only Indian artifact that uh, that we've ever found close by, you know. And and uh, you know, uh, Richard Pearson would maybe know why it was called the Indian. Okay. He would probably know that because he's older, and of course he was raised up there, not far from it. You know, mm -hmm. closer to it than I was, and his family used that country a lot to, you know, to, to fish. And his his uh, uh, his uh, grandfather uh, and uh, uncles, uh, the Francs, uh, uh, old uh, Hurdy Franck and. Uh, Dan and Vince uh, was his mother's uh, uh, father and brothers. Mm -hmm. They were quite the hunters and trappers, I think, and, mm -hmm. and stuff, you know. And, and they had homesteaded up there by the Indian Trail too, right? Well, the yeah, they actually Baker's homesteaded up there, Franks, uh, before the Indian Trail comes out. It comes out right at the Baker's That's at the place. fence. Mm -hmm. right. Yeah, but that, that see, that was the Baker place. Franks had that above there. They they had the 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 the, the first uh, the far the farthest up uh, uh, places farthest up the flat. Mm -hmm. uh, there was. Uh, uh, I think I remember. Had three, they had three homesteads up there: Dan's and Vince's and and uh, Hurley's. Right. I remember Eileen talking of growing up there. Mm -hmm. Mm hmm. Yeah, and then later Eileen. See, then, then when Baker sold out in the 40s and moved to Montana, uh, Shell Baker uh, bought Arthur Campbell's place. Arthur Campbell, my granddad's brother, wasn't here very long, I don't think. And uh, Shell Baker bought his place, so they had a pretty good-sized chunk of ground. And then, 
when they moved to Montana, uh, and 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 then Theodore uh, Shell's son, he had a homestead too, you know. So uh, that was up there. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, so uh, I think there's uh, seven homesteads on that flat. I think is what there right. is. And and. Uh, uh, which is now all Little Jenny Ranch. Yeah, one of them's below us. Uh, seven homesteads irrigate out of that ditch, out of that ditch that goes down through there. And, uh, well, uh, there was seven homesteads on the flat. They don't all irrigate out of that ditch. Dan's didn't irrigate out of that ditch. It irrigated out of Jack Creek. It's, you, you can't, you don't even see the uh, Dan's. It's above and uh, it, it's above uh, the, the buildings up there where uh, the upper Little Jenny Ranch buildings, it's above and across Jack Creek. Oh, and there, uh, yeah. and uh, uh, it's, uh, uh, have you ever been to Webb's camp? Yeah. Well, it's that meadow ground brought down that the Webb used wow. to run his horses there on that, on uh, well, see, Which that is now Forest Service, right? No. It's, is that it's, still Jenny? The, 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 yeah, that, that pasture ground, that's part of the Dan, what they call the Dan field, and they don't hay it anymore. And, and it did deer gate out of Jack Creek, but not out of the same ditch as the other homesteads. Hmm. Now, the honeymoon cabin, I've heard and ridden horses up by the honeymoon cabin. Was that somebody's homestead there? No, that, I mean, that was Vince's, it's on Vince's home, Vince Frank's homestead, but uh, that wags to, uh, Bob Wagstaff had that moved up there, and that's why they call it the honeymoon cabin. He and his wife used to go up there and stay or whatever, you know. And honeymoon. And honeymoon, I guess. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> and then, uh, yeah, and so he had it moved up there. Uh, the ranch hands moved it up there, I think, pulled it up there with cat and mm -hmm. it up or whatever. So how much, I, I keep hearing people talk about how the snow levels have changed here when you were you know, early, or as early as you can remember childhood. Um, I mean, the, the amount of snow that Bondurant would get, it, 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 I would think would make it really hard to get around. Um, did you, I've heard people talk about snow planes. Did your family have a snow plane? No, Franks did. But and this was like a little plane that had skis? Is that like a snow machine with wings? Yes, Is that it, what? Well, no. It had skis instead of wings, see? It didn't have wings. It had a propeller, <laughs> and it was on skis. That's why it wasn't. That's why it wasn't. Well, that's why it wasn't, like, that's, why, that's why it wasn't an airplane. Air, an airplane. Well, they could land on skis. An, an airplane has wings. <laughs> a snow plane has skis. Hmm. Okay. See? And that, see, that's the difference. <laughs> that's why they call okay. an airplane an an airplane because it has wings and it can fly. <laughs> and a snow plane has skis and it can go on the snow. That's why, Got that's it. why they call it a snow plane. But it ha but they both have propellers. Yeah, yeah, okay. Hence yeah. the word plane. All right, plane. Gotcha. <laughs> Back to the original question. Did your family have a snow plane? I already said no. Bronx <laughs> did. <laughs> And that was because the roads weren't plowed, so they would have to come in and out to the highway or to the to the point that the road would be plowed, I guess. Well, like the that, upper Jenny, yeah, which that we was, call that, now, that, down You to. know, that was like in my pretty early years. Things, you know, we're talking about, I mean... Electricity and running water? <laughs> <laughs> well, uh... Now, remember my, you're on camera. <laughs> <laughs> my, uh, uh, my grandmother didn't ever have run. Catherine just put water into that house since I've been here. <coughs> right. Mm -hmm. And uh, so, anyway, uh, 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 you know, like from when I was a, like a five-year-old and six-year-old to when I was like going, to, boarding out and going to high school, things changed quite a lot in those few years, you know. I mean, uh, uh, and... Uh, like my dad, no, he didn't have a snow plane, uh, but he would have a, a snow trail to the highway that either with a team 
uh, or uh, they'd go to the t highway with the team or uh, ride a saddle horse down and, and they'd have a, a vehicle parked on the highway. And uh, down here at the old post office, I believe, is where they usually parked it. And uh, like maybe possibly at Flurky's, but Flurky was kind of an ornery old guy, so they probably, probably wouldn't. <laughs> I think they'd park it down here at the old post office. And, and, uh, uh, and he, of course, the, there was usually snow on the highway, too. <laughs> so it wasn't a problem when I mean, he'd get to the highway with his team and sleigh. Just one bob, not a big hay rack type of sleigh, just one bob with a little box on it. And it's for you to ride in and whatever. And uh, then if they had to go to town, why, uh, it, uh, they'd tie, he'd tie the team up to the bubble. That's what we called the little sleigh, was a bubble. Or, and uh, it had some hay. Put hay in for you to sit on while you were going down there, you know. And team, you'd hay and they'd go to town and get, not very often, but because we'd get what you call winter groceries in and you'd bring them in and stock up on anything that you might need except what little fresh stuff you'd need in the, uh, in the fall and haul it in on, on the old Jeep. If you didn't yeah. have it, you went without. Huh? If you didn't have it, you went without it. Yeah, we had a sailor mm -hmm. and stuff. Yeah. And, but they'd go to town every, every once in a while, you know. And, 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 uh, but that's how they'd get to the highway. Now, and as far as the snow levels, I, you, you hear them talk about how the winters uh, are, used to be a lot tougher, but they weren't. We have some we, awful tough winters now. But we have equipment to deal with it, so it's right, a lot easier to right. deal with. Right, but as, as, uh, you know, People say, oh, it doesn't snow like it used to. Well, uh, and, and I believe that's maybe true in some areas. I think Jackson doesn't get the snow like it used to, does it? Because I've seen the pictures of when they used to have uh, some of those big snow years, you know. Uh, uh, but, uh, you know, uh, the winter of uh, 96 uh, and 7, that was you my were second here year. Time. That was my second year. And uh, didn't scare me. That, that was the most snow. <laughs> no, it didn't scare you <laughs> off any. But uh, they, uh, that was the most uh, snow I ever saw in my life. That was more snow than I ever saw in yeah. any time when I was growing up. Oh. Uh, I never saw that much snow. And the forecast this year is they're calling for a lot of snow this year. Well, we'll see. You probably won't get much more interview out of me you ruined my day when you told me that. <laughs> you better start putting your winter groceries up. <laughs> I, I, I hate those old deep snow years because I've fought it all my life and I've finally figured out uh, I used to think you needed quite a little snow for water. You know, look at what a small amount of snow we had last winter and what a good hay year and just a good year. If you have the right kind of spring and summer to follow, you don't need all that snow. And it again, what it, goes what it, what it, what anyway. it, what it really, what it, yeah, most of it winds up in Idaho anyway. It just runs <coughs> down to Palisades, and uh, uh, and uh, it costs it costs a lot of uh, money and hard work. You know, yeah. you had to rebuild the fences in the spring and <coughs> plow a lot of, you know, a lot of work plowing your hay out and and, and everything. So. But, and you know, I've, uh, two springs ago, spring before last, uh, that we had, uh, didn't have a huge amount of snow that winter. We had some, but I never saw a spring in my life that was that cold, you know. Mm -hmm. So, we, we, when we were, we, it was still getting 10 below in the mornings when we were starting to calve in April, you know. So, as far as it being, the weather being a lot tougher back then, uh, I don't think it was, you know, and uh, when uh, uh, I don't remember what year this was, but, uh, and I know that, that the winter of 36, my dad talked about being a, a really tough winter. I don't remember what year it was that uh, uh, his uh, little sister died, and uh, she's buried up here in the Bondurant Cemetery. And that was in March, 
he said, and he said they uh, went over and buried her with the team and sleigh, of course, and some of the neighbors came on shore or whatever, and from the place where I live now, the old homestead, and he said they had trouble finding sleigh and getting back. So, you know, they didn't have much snow that winter, you know, and that was in like the uh, 30s probably, you know, I would guess, or, or, or yeah, I guess it would be like in the 30s probably. So, and so as far so as what's your what's your attitude towards global warming? <laughs> <laughs> I wish you did get here. <laughs> <laughs> You're ready. <laughs> yeah, I'm ready. ready. <laughs> Do you want to take a break? Yeah. Can we get you back? Uh, sure. Jeez, okay. We really need. Do you know?